Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. All right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Beautiful looking Wednesday, by the way. We all have busy lives. I think that's probably a given, and I just say that so that because I want to tell you about my schedule and Robin's schedule. Not to make it seem like we believe we are busier than any of you, because I know we're all busy, but just to, to use it as a way to introduce you to our next guest, okay? So here's, here's my schedule. I get up at 3 a.m. every day in order to do a show that starts at 7 a.m. So exactly. you might ask, why so early? Well, there's there's some reasons. One of them is because, you know, by the time I shower and everything, it's, uh, an hour has passed. Next thing you know, it's 4 o'clock by the time I, I'm leaving. And, and I get here about 4.30. So now I have uh, two and a half hours to prepare for the show. Yes. And I do show prep. Okay. And then we're on the air all the way till noon. And then, of course, I have to do other radio-related work until 3.00. So, so basically, for 12 hours of my day are occupied by getting ready and doing the radio gig, right? Now, how many of you know that Robin and I also do a children's podcast? Okay, not to mention that we also do children's books. So, when do you squeeze in the time for those things? That's the thing. That's the challenge. So, basically, what we do is for the children's podcast, we record the raw audio on Wednesday nights, which is tonight. We produce them on Thursday nights, which is tomorrow night. And for the children's books, the illustrating is what takes the longest because those pictures take a long time to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, they're beautiful. They take a long time, but you have to find time to do them. Otherwise, they don't get done, right? That's right. And so, and I'm not trying to complain. I, in fact, I, I embrace it all. I love doing all of, all of these things. But you do have to find places to squeeze it in. So let's use the Christmas season for an example, Okay. On the Christmas season, um, hey, we've got a party, we've got a gathering, we've got a get together. We're going to do this, we're going to do that. And next thing you know, it's like, well, wait a minute, this is eating into my time that I set aside for the the children's stuff that we do, right? Yeah, exactly. A and because we control that, it's not like it was with the radio station. This is a job. People look at it differently, right? So they think, well, you can break away from the children's stuff, right? Because you're the boss of that. Well, yeah, but you still got to find time. <laughs> that's so right. that's it why our time. next guest has a book that I definitely want to pay attention to. It's called Life at Min, and Elizabeth Emmons is the author. And I apologize, Elizabeth, for such a long intro, but I just thought it would be a great way for me to express why I think this is an important book. The subtitle for Life at Min is How I Learned to Do Less, Do Better, and Live More. Okay, Elizabeth Emmons is an attorney. The the, is it Isidore, Robin? Isidore and Seville yes. Sosbacher Professor of Law at Columbia Law School. Isn't that cool? And uh, let's say hello. Good morning. And it's an honor, Elizabeth. Thank you for being on the air with us today. Good morning and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, we're busy over here. Are you busy? <laughs> we're, we're all busy. Where are you? I'm in New York City. The busiest city in the world, right? <laughs> People here like to think so. Yeah. But everybody's busy. Yeah. So how are you? How was your holiday season? It was really good. You? It was good. But but there was a lot of things we had to do, for, you know, social things, family things, which is great, too, right? Exactly. So, so did you find yourself with all the theories that you have in the book, the ideas put to, put to the test during the holiday season? Yeah, I wrote a couple of blogs for Psychology Today, actually, about the holiday admin um, that we all do, the, the life admin, all the office work of planning the gifts and schedu scheduling the events and uh -huh. then writing the thank yous afterwards. Uh, there are ways we can do that that make it easier or harder for ourselves, but it is a lot of work. So tell me about your life before life admin, before you figured out some of these techniques. What was your life like? How did it change? Well, after my second child was born, there was a moment when I felt so completely overwhelmed, and I thought it was just me. You know, I just thought, well, I'm just not organized enough, or I'm just not on top of things enough. And then I, I began to realize, I looked around, and it seemed as though there was this kind of invisible layer of work, of kind of office-type work that I hadn't planned on as part of being a parent or part of uh, my life, really, which was all of the managerial work of deciding things and 
planning things and the secretarial type work of filling out a million forms. Right, uh, right, right, and, right. And rescheduling your whole day when some event gets bumped. Oh, yes, yes. And big life events like having a kid, happy ones like having a kid or a wedding, but also painful ones like being ill or a health crisis for a loved one or an ailing parent. These come with huge amounts of admin and we think about them in terms of the happy event or the sad event often but the work around it is often incredibly laborious and Very so I true. saw this kind of invisible layer of work I was doing and I realized it wasn't just my problem it was everyone's problem and that we could make changes yes as individuals but also there were changes we needed in society as well and so we wouldn't need to just all feel we were individually failing really now sometimes I admire New Yorkers because I, I, I'm, it's the grass is always greener syndrome. Like here, it, let's say for example, I have a, a two-hour slot that's uh, that I'm allotting to whatever it is I want to do. But guess what? I got to go to the bank. I got to go to the grocery store. I, I got to do this. And in this area, I have to get in a car and drive. And there's a twenty-minute drive here, a twenty-minute drive. And that's why I always admire New York. You can just, you know, get out, and get, walk to the next thing, and you're there. But I'm sure I'm wrong about that. Well, it's true that everything is closer together, but for everybody these days, everywhere, the demands of technology mean that we're getting these kinds of admin demands put on us all the time through text, through emails, and they can reach us uh, at all hours. Uh, in a way that means that all of our lives, I think, have a different kind of feeling. There's always been admin, but it reaches us Can uh, I, more intensely now. This is maybe a personal question, but as an attorney, do you find you're better able to do the admin stuff in your professional life than you are the admin stuff in your personal life? That's a great question. Uh, I think the answer is yes, um, but it's different for everyone. So I interviewed... Uh, two women in uh, Glasgow who found that they were opposites in this regard. One of them said in response to we started talking about life admin, it resonated for both of them. And one of them said, you know, I think actually I am only able to do my job so well because I pretty much ignore all those things you're talking about as life admin in my life until they get so overwhelming that I just have to face them because oh. something terrible is going to happen. And the other one said, for me, it's the opposite. She said, I think I'm really good at getting these things done in my life because I can actually check off boxes and get things done. And in my professional life, she said, it's these long-term projects. And, uh, you know, I, I don't get that same satisfaction of, of crossing things off the list. But you, but you have to learn how to not overlap things like work and what you're doing in your personal life because otherwise nothing gets done. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can just be one big overwhelm. <laughs> yeah, I'm more. I'm more like your first friend. I'm the one who says, "Let's just put it off." But but you, the, another thing in the professional world, you can delegate. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of hard to delegate in your personal life. Who do you delegate to? Mm -hmm. You know, people find different ways. People do find ways to work with family members and friends um, and neighbors. You know, one kind of admin strategy I got from the admin avoiders, I have these four admin personalities that I derived from the interviews and brainstorming sessions I did. We all have different admin personalities. From my admin avoiders, one strategy I learned was trusting. So trusting that the neighbors near your new home know when to put the garbage out. So you just wait and look every day, and then you put it out when they put it out, rather than going online or calling up the sanitation department or whatever <laughs> to try to find out the answer to the question. Right. So there are strategies we can get from everybody, and sometimes delegation in the sense is, is following somebody else's information node. Were you uh, one of these person? Oh, were you each of these personalities at different times during your life? You know, I am mainly a reluctant doer. Um, by reluctant doer, I mean I basically get it done, but I don't really l like to do it. I wish I didn't have to do it. I wish somebody else would do it instead of me. Uh, but in certain areas, most of us are a mix of personality, so there's a quiz at the back of the book, uh, which is kind of fun as an introduction to admin. Most of us are a mix, so I'm a super doer with regard to things like uh, figuring out um, educational stuff for my kids. I get really invested in that. I care about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, for most of us, there's some areas. And then with my snail mail that comes, it piles up in my hallway. I'm a total avoider with my snail mail. Uh, it seems too. like almost nothing interesting or fun comes in snail mail <laughs> right. anymore. Oh, and right. so right. I, I avoid that. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you about the modern technology. I, one thing I need to start figuring out how to do is taking a photo of checks and just depositing them that way. Because I can do that. My bank says I can do that. But like an idiot, I still drive there. 
<laughs> and wait in line. I, I could avoid all that. I could probably save an hour every now and then, right? Well, it's amazing. The, the startup costs of admin improvements uh, are often pretty significant. You know, so it's not, you're not an idiot. I mean, you're putting it off. Also, you may be putting it off long enough to make sure the technology works till somebody you know has actually said it works. <laughs> because right, often right. when you try these new technologies, you can waste, I did this, I tried lots of different apps for to-do lists because I have a to-do list problem. And I tried all these different apps and I wasted so much time because I would spend, you know, I put everything in there and then it would turn out it didn't sync with my laptop. Or I, I put everything in there and then there'd be a glitch in the system. And eventually what I found in my own life and for my interviewees is that a lot of people had reverted to paper uh, for their to-do lists or to the closest approximation of that in their phone, which is, so I use my notes app in my phone, which is basically just like paper in that it's not organized by fancy categories. But so sometimes that impulse you have not to do the technological upgrade is a good one until you know that it's really going to be good. And then, yeah, then you have to find a moment where you have time for a system improvement. I have some ideas to try in the back of the book, and I actually divide them up into for an urgent moment is the first 10, and then the next 10 is for a time when you actually have a few minutes and a few hours to make a system improvement because those are just different moments in life. Uh, when you did your research, how did you get people to open up about their particular category? Were they willing to share that information with you? You know, it's really interesting. People were surprisingly happy to talk about admin. Uh, this is this really intimate area, it turns out. I didn't anticipate this in starting this research. It sounds like it's a boring topic. In fact, people apologized to me a lot about talking. They would say, oh, I'm so sorry, this must be boring you, <laughs> even though I was interviewing them oh, about wow. admin. Right, right, right. And it really shows how much I think we all feel like this is this tedious, boring part of our lives that we shouldn't bore anyone else with and that we have to kind of privately suffer through. And people seem to find that sharing about it, talking about it, was a relief. And that in itself seemed to make people happy, which was a big upshot of this work was that visibility uh, really makes a difference. Just seeing this stuff as real makes a real difference for people. I'm, I'm wondering about something that I'm making a, 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 a guess at, is that the, the tools or the, the techniques that you use to administer your life probably uh, came into play with just the writing of the book. I mean, you had to find the time each day mm -hmm. or, or, or every other day, however you did it, to write the book. This book itself is a, is a representation of some successful time management, isn't it? Absolutely. If this had not been what I was writing on in this particular period of my life, I don't think I could have finished a book. I was constantly innovating in order to support the process of being able uh, to write uh, in a, a busy life. It's a, you're exactly right. It feels to me like a miracle that this book is actually, is actually finished. Uh, one of the strategies... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you, you go ahead. Go ahead. Well, and one I, of the strategies I came up with was uh, an admin study hall. So when I was in a period with a really intensive amount of admin to do, uh, I would join together with a friend, sometimes far away. We would usually do it on our computers, on FaceTime or you know, some kind of video conference where we would just set up a study hall. we a time where we'd slot an hour and we would plan, meet up, say hello, say what we were intending to get done, and then just sit there and kind of be company and accountability. And then at the end, we would say, uh, what we'd done and, you know, give ourselves some kind of reward for doing it. It was a way to contain the admin and also to know that the admin would get done. And eventually for right. me, that, that morphed into a kind of general study hall where I would actually do my writing in those times and push the admin out. And the same thing must be happening right now. I mean, the ra radio interviews can eat up a lot of your time, too. I mean, in trying to do <laughs> this very thing right here, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything we do, right, can, can be, you know, uh, a, a struggle around all the other things that we've got to do in our lives. Uh, you have different descriptions of admin. You have um, awful and murky and sticky. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What is the difference between the three? Well, so murky admin is admin that stays on your to-do list for a long time, much longer than your usual turnaround time. And it's usually because there's some decision you have to make or something that's, that makes that that's harder. That's the laundry. Than that's the laundry right there. The laundry for you. For me, it was at one point, it was, I, I got, I signed up for uh, identity theft protection. Having interviewed someone who'd had their identity stolen and it, how much saw how much admin it gave her, I signed up for some identity theft protection, and they were calling me to renew it. I had to give them a new credit card, update my credit card or something, and I kept ignoring them and ignoring them and ignoring them. That was my murky admin. It was oh, no. forever. And then finally it occurred to me the reason was because 
I just wasn't sure I wanted to keep this protection. I at least didn't want to keep it at the current level of protection. I, I had this high level of protection where they told me about every known sex offender in like a one-mile area. They would send me these emails, which in New York City is a lot of people. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't want to be getting emails oh, no. you know, all the time about these known sex offenders. So, but it was hard to decide to downgrade my identity theft protection. You know, that, what is that? That, that sounds scary, right? So I couldn't decide. So often murky admin is because there's a decision you have to make or some reason that it's hard to admit the thing, like you don't want to write to the person and say, I lost that thing I'm supposed to return to you. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So murky admin is, is like that. Um, so t t and can you talk about the self-inflicted, uh, let's say, time thieves? Uh, I'll tell you one for me. A self-inflicted time thief is Facebook. I will mm -hmm. go on Facebook. It's, it's really a waste of time. But sometimes it's a relaxing thing to do, too. But you can get stuck there, and you might want maybe te watching television could be a, a self-inflicted time thief, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and all of the technology, social media, all of that for a lot of people, and email is a huge time drain. And one of the things that people do with that, you know, is to try to cabinet. Um, but it, it becomes very difficult because so much work gets done there, work, work, and life work. Um, and so I've at least started trying to have, I, I've removed uh, certain apps from my phone. I've sort of made my smartphone dumber is one of the things I've done so that at least I can't do it on the fly. So it's not constantly. Ah, yeah. And at night I turn off my email in my phone so that if I wake up in the middle of the night, some, a lot of people I talk to have a 4 a.m., admin wake up call you it sounds like are already up at 4 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> so admin's yeah, not yeah. waking you up but for many of us we wake up in the middle of the night worrying about the to-do list um, and if I can also turn to my phone and see in my email then new inputs are coming in so when I turn off my email at night and then turn it on in the morning it just takes a moment and it does at least clear that space in my head a little bit and uh, sometimes people are very very good at what they do and they're so good that other people don't recognize that it does take effort to do whatever it is you're doing. So how do you get people to appreciate you? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great point. So illuminating is a reluctant doer strategy. Um, uh, illuminating is kind of a nice word, too, for complaining. <laughs> but I, I prefer illuminating. But casting light on the work that you're doing, finding a way to say, um, you know, this, this really took uh, some time. I think there can be nice ways to do that. Um, but also... Uh, you asked before about stickiness. What's uh -huh. stickiness in admin? Yes. So stickiness is one of the ways that admin gets stuck to certain people. Admin tends to stay where it lands even more than regular household chores. So life admin is the office type work uh, that takes up our time, right? It's the kind of work that managers and secretaries do, um, but in the home. And it's more information dependent. Uh, than more physical chores like doing the dishes, say. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when somebody, it's, it's a lot easier, it's why it's a lot easier to go in someone else's home and do their dishes after dinner than it is to make their grocery list. Oh, yeah. Right? You've got to know things in order to do the grocery list. Well, what that also means is that admin often also sticks on the person who first starts doing it. So the person who first calls up the exterminator is often the contact person for exterminating for all the calls after that. Uh, you know, the person who installs an app in order to order things from a company or whatever is the person who mm -hmm. often keeps ordering that thing. Uh, and there are a lot of different ways you can have that first landing point. Some of them come from the outside world. Some of them follow gender. Some of them follow other people's expectations. And some of them, though, are by you volunteer to do it. Um, but so once you pay attention to that, you can also use that awareness of stickiness to reroute things. Yeah. Right? You could say, I've been covering so much with the health insurance issues with our family that, you know, it'd be really great if you could take on the taxes this year. Um, you know, that there's some way, and then once the person makes the information transfer, then they've got the information there to keep going with it. We were in Walmart, and I said to Robin, I think we're, I think only old people are in Walmart. I think young people don't do this anymore. And then, uh, then we found out what happened, because we're old, just so you know. And so I, 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 I said to Robin, I think young people do this differently. And, and what we discovered is they order their stuff on the phone and then they drive up to the side of the building and somebody brings it out to them so all that oh, time okay. we waste walking up down those aisles mm -hmm. and, and, and robin said yeah but i prefer to pick out my own produce and i i said i'll be fine whatever the kid brings me <laughs> i'm fine how bad could it uh, could have had a lettuce be <laughs> well, I totally hear you, though. And the fact that you have differences in that, though, is really common, right? We care about different things, which is why this book isn't a recipe book. Uh, there's one big point, which is admin is visible. Once it's visible, we can make different kinds of choices about it, and we can appreciate the work that we're doing when we have to do it, and we can make changes as a society. But 
it's not a recipe book in the sense that there's not, here's exactly the map. Everybody shouldn't go get one particular app on their phone, or everybody shouldn't revert to paper. We have different ways that work for us and different things that we care about, and we have to see that. But once we see it, then we can we can make choices around that. Yeah, excellent. Uh, perfect timing, by the way. I think the beginning of the year is a perfect time to try to reorganize your life so that you can maybe uh, use your time smarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, the book will help you with that. It's called Life at Men. It's written by Elizabeth M. E-M-E-N-S. I found it on Amazon. I have a copy of it here. If, if I have one person who wants to give me a call, I'll pick one call at random and it'll be yours. And I know you have to run for another interview. Um, do you have a website you want to recommend to us? Uh, ElizabethEmmons.com. Okay, easy enough. Um, Happy New Year, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Happy New Year to you. All Take right. care. You. Thank you. We'll be right back. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in Wednesday, January 9th at 9:30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion, when our guests will be Advent Health, formerly Florida Hospital, and learn how Career Source can help you. Palm Garden announces Fast Track. Fast Track, focused assessment, safe transition. When a new guest is admitted to Palm Garden, we start with the ABCs. A is the assessment to determine what the guest needs. B is for basic care, which is excellent nursing and therapy. And C is for consistency to provide what's needed throughout the stay. Fast Track, Palm Garden will get you home fast, really, really fast. Take a fast tour of Palm Garden located at the corner of Southwest 27th Avenue and 34th Street. The Great American Menu lives at Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers. Sizzling steak burgers made fresh when you order. Premium beef hot dogs, crispy shoestring fries, and Freddy's rich and creamy custard made fresh throughout the day. The classic taste enjoyed by generations of American families. Served every day at Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers with the most American ingredient of all, a smile. Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers, the taste that brings you back. It's time for Farmer Ranch Headlines on the Southeast Agnet. I'm Tyron Spearman reporting. The Agriculture Department says they are closing the Farm Service Agent offices after this past Friday and will suspend the publication of some re- news reports and take others offline with the partial government shutdown that is underway and looks like it'll drag into next year. The closing of the local FSA office means that the agency will stop processing new applications for that market facilitation program payments, which was caused by the tariffs. The deadline for applying for the payments is uh, going to be January the 15th, so you'll still have time to get by the FSA office, hopefully. The uh, special Special program, market facilitation program payments, will continue to be distributed to farmers who have had their production already certified by FSA. USDA's Market News Service will continue issuing its monthly reports, but reports from the National Ag Statistics Service will be suspended, as well as the World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates scheduled for release January the 11th. The Economic Research Service site, they said, will be taken offline by the department. USDA is among the departments and agencies for which Congress has not yet passed a fiscal year spending bill. Others include the Environmental Protection Agency, Food and Drug Administration, and the Interior Department. Those departments and agencies have been operating on a FY18 spending level, which expired December the 21st. A toast to soil health. More and more landowners and their farmers are celebrating healthy soil for good reason. Because farmers who use soil health building practices like no-till and cover crops and who use diverse species and rotations report greater farm productivity, profitability, and resiliency. So here's to your soil's health. Contact your local USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service office today and learn how to unlock the secrets in your soil. This message brought to you by USDA and this radio station. I'm Darren Spearman for Southeast Agnet. Friends, countrymen, tourists, and O'Callans, lend me your ears. Hey, speaking of ears, there is an opportunity for you to help feed and provide good maintenance, housing, and medical care for Marion County's rescued big cats, bears, monkeys, and other disabled or unreleasable wild and exotic animals. Take a tour on Wednesdays or Saturdays of the Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary. Call 352-266-2859. The Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary is a 
affectionately known as EARS. Veterans Helping Veterans USA. Call 352-433-2320. We help veterans and their families with limited financial assistance, counseling, employment referrals, and a food and clothing bank. You can help in making a huge difference in the veterans' lives we serve by donating food, clothing, household items, or direct financial assistance. All donations are tax deductible. Veterans Helping Veterans USA. 352-433-2320. Thank you for your attention and God bless America. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. President Trump on Twitter responds to an op-ed in the Washington Post by incoming Utah Senator Mitt Romney by saying Romney should focus on border security and so many other things where he can be helpful. Romney, who accused the president of a glaring shortfall in terms of character and leadership abilities, criticized the president during the 2016 campaign. He later tried to get a job with the Trump administration, but was passed over by the president for secretary of state. Fox's John Decker. Border agents fired tear gas at a group of migrants trying to breach a border fence in Tijuana, Mexico. Customs and Border Protection officials say the gas was used to target rock throwers apart from the migrants who were trying to cross. An Associated Press photographer saw gas launched onto the Mexican side of the border near Tijuana's beach at least three times and said that it affected migrants, including women and children, as well as journalists. Border Protection officials say the incident will be reviewed by the Office of Professional Responsibility. That's Tanya J. Powers. This is Fox News. Get up first thing, smoke a cigarette before lunch, after lunch. Now that I'm talking about it, I kind of feeling like I've lost about four hours of every day. I decided I needed to find an alternative. So I started looking and then Juul came up. I did both for a while. It eventually I just switched over and it's very quick. Mimi made the switch July 2015. Make the switch at JUUL.com. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Pros in the know start with Lowe's because Lowe's makes it easy for pros to save on the supplies they need. Save on your next kitchen or bathroom job with 40% off select American Olean tile and enhance the look of any popper. Plus, you can save time by ordering what you need at Lowe'sforpros.com and pick up your order in store. So, pro, now that you know, start with Lowe's. Offer valid through February 9th, 2019, while supplies last, U.S. only. Announcing Gemma Adams in concert, we'd like to invite you to an awesome dual concert Friday, January the 11th at Christ Church of Marion, 6768 Southwest 80th Street. RSVP is required for dinner, served at 5.15 p.m., and the concert will start promptly at 6.30 p.m. Backwater Bluegrass will open up, followed by hit recording artist Gemma Adams. Jesus loves you, don't matter if you lost or found, if you rise and if you fall. Gemma Adams, singer, songwriter, and musician with two hit songs on three different charts. A large crowd is expected, so make reservations now at 352-861-6182. Every sinner has a future. Every angel has a past. Ask yourself, what do you pay for health care? Are you single? Do you pay more than $199 a month? Are you a couple? Do you pay more than $249 a month? Do you have a family? Do you pay more than $529 a month? Yes, you can serve the entire family with health care for only $529 a month. Sign up at any time of the year, pick your own doctor and hospital, ask any questions in our live chat box. It takes two minutes to find out how to save. Go to lightyourliberty.com. That's lightyourliberty.com. The Great American Menu lives at Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers. Sizzling steak burgers made fresh when you order. Premium beef hot dogs, crispy shoestring fries, and Freddy's rich and creamy custard made fresh throughout the day. The classic taste enjoyed by generations of American families. Served every day at Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers with the most American ingredient of all, a smile. Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers, the taste that brings you back. 
Here are today's headlines from the source. WOCA officials say six passengers fell ill on a Frontier Airlines flight from Cleveland to Tampa. WFLA-TV reports health officials boarded the plane when it landed at Tampa International Airport yesterday afternoon and the sick passengers were removed. Officials say they are being held for observation. The sick passengers were not traveling together. The remaining passengers were kept on the plane for about an hour after it landed. Those passengers deplaned around 4.30 p.m. An airport representative says there is a possibility the affected passengers' illnesses were connected to a drinking fountain. The fountains in the Frontier Concourse at the airport have been shut down as a safety precaution. Authorities have not provided information on the symptoms the passengers were experiencing or their conditions. Frontier said in a statement that cause of the illness remains under investigation. A two-year-old girl who fell into a rhinoceros enclosure at the Brevard Zoo is doing well. Keith Winston is the zoo's executive director. While the father was kneeling down holding the child, according to the witnesses, the child stumbled backwards, fell between the bars. Uh, the father and the mother immediately reacted and brought the child out. But at least one, if not two, of the rhinos, we think, made contact with their snout. The girl's father issued a statement saying it was a trying day for the family. The zoo immediately shut down its rhino encounter exhibit where the incident happened early yesterday afternoon. The rhino encounter exhibit is described as a hands-on educational experience. Thirteen years after lifting off from Cape Canaveral, NASA's new Horizons probe completed a flyby of Ultima Thule, the most distant object ever visited by a spacecraft in the early hours of yesterday morning. New Horizons Mission Operations Manager Alice Bowman describes what this mission means for future science discoveries. You saw that we locked up to telemetry on the spacecraft. Um, everything looks great, and um, we are definitely looking forward to getting down this science data so all of our scientists and the world can see what um, the outer solar system, the origins of our solar system, um, have to hold for us. What surprises? Due to the far distance between the spacecraft and Earth, it will take until September of 2020 to retrieve all of the data stored on the probe. A survivor from the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting is reaching out to comedian Louis C.K. after he apparently mocked the shooting survivors in a stand-up routine. C.K. said, quote, Cause you went to a high school where kids got shot. Why does that mean I have to listen to you? Why does that mean you're interesting? You didn't get shot. You pushed some fat kid in the way. And now I have to listen to you talking, unquote. To which Parkland survivor Alia Eastman responded, quote, Hey, Louis C.K., since you like making fun of me and other Parkland survivors behind closed doors, I'm right here if you want to talk, unquote. In less than a week, Rick Scott will become Florida's junior U.S. Senator. Fellow Republican Marco Rubio predicts it'll take a while for Scott, who has served as Florida's governor for eight years, to get used to the slower pace of the Senate. If you go back and understand, see the Republic and how it was founded, they created the Senate to stop the House and the executive branch. They created specifically to slow things down. Initially, it wasn't even directly elected. It was so chosen by state legislatures. So by nature, the Senate is a slower place, and that can be frustrating, especially for someone who's always been in an executive role. Rubio becomes Florida's senior senator. He says he doesn't know if that comes with any perks. A Pinellas County man has died after he fell into a pool while in his wheelchair in Palm Harbor. His wife and a caretaker found 68-year-old Terry Chambers in the pool, but neither they nor paramedics were able to save him. It's not clear how his wheelchair fell into the pool, but the incident is not considered suspicious. The new year is only a couple of days old, and some people might already be finding it hard to keep their resolutions. Florida family therapist Judy Adelston says the key is to make them doable. If we want better financial health, we start slowly saving money, $10 a week. It doesn't have to be a lot, but something to start moving towards the goal. So we don't want to make it too big that we can't make it. We don't want it too small that we get bored. We want it to be just right, kind of like Goldilocks. 
A British man who says he knows firsthand what sick children are going through is doing his part to help them. Jamie McDonald has been running across America since April to raise money for children's hospitals, and he arrived in Jacksonville yesterday. McDonald suffered as a child from what he says was a rare condition that left him unable to move his legs at times. This 6,000-mile run is expected to end in Maine in three months. A man has been charged with second-degree murder after deputies found the body of his mother in her North Florida home. News outlets reported that 44-year-old Joel Lee Weeks called the Baker County Sheriff's Office on Monday and told dispatchers he needed emergency medical help. When deputies arrived at the home, they found the hilt of a knife protruding from a wound in Weeks' stomach. Then they found the body of 66-year-old Rebecca Ann Osteen in one of the bedrooms. Authorities did not say how she was killed. Weeks has two outstanding warrants from Duval County, including probation violations for DUI and domestic violence. Weeks is recovering from his injuries at a Jacksonville hospital. Police in South Florida say a car plunged into a lake, killing a 19-year-old and sending a 15-year-old girl to a hospital with critical injuries. Miami-Dade police say the four teens were inside the car when it crashed into a lake in Miami Lakes early yesterday morning. Two 18-year-olds, driver Jonathan Perez and passenger Kevin Placeres, escaped without injuries. Authorities say Christopher Jamie was declared dead at a hospital. It was not clear what led to the crash. An investigation continues. Two brothers have been reunited after 70 years thanks to a DNA test. The Palm Beach Post reports the DNA test in November 2017 gave Anthony Granito the answer he had been searching for, a brother named John DiPietro, who lives in Massachusetts. But they didn't come face-to-face until Sunday after DiPietro coordinated with Granito's daughter-in-law for the surprise meeting at a Japanese restaurant. Granito says he got goosebumps when he saw his brother's face, adding he had waited almost 70 years for this. They talked for hours at the restaurant, swapping jokes and family stories. They learned that neither brother smokes nor drinks, and neither gambles for the same reason. They work too hard for their money to bet it away. The brothers say they plan to stay in touch now that they have connected. Disney's Hollywood Studios is getting a brand new logo this year as part of its 30th anniversary celebration. The commemorative logo was revealed on New Year's Eve during the Disney Parks blog live stream of the Fantasy in the Sky fireworks show. The logo, which features Mickey and Minnie Mouse, will begin appearing in the park in late January. Other versions of the logo have been created and feature other characters, according to Disney. Those logos will debut in the coming weeks. Disney's Hollywood Studios, previously known as Disney MGM Studios will mark its 30th anniversary on May 1st. And those are the headlines from the source WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. Partly sunny, very warm, humid day with a high of 79 in the coast, 83 inland. Mainly clear winds tonight with some fog late, low 60 inland, 67 along the coast. Thursday will start with some fog, otherwise partly sunny and very warm, high 80 to 84. Remaining warm on Friday with intervals of clouds and sunshine and a high again, 80 to 84. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, I'm Anthony with Finishing Touch Floors. Are you considering covering your old wood floors? Forget about it. Let Finishing Touch Floors restore your old wood floors. We offer sanding, refinishing, installation, and custom colored stains. With over 35 years experience, you need to call 321-396-2657. Let us put the finishing touch on your wood floors. For your free estimate, call 321-396-2657. That's 321-396-2657. Veterans Helping Veterans USA. Call 